Today, we're making ballistics gel. I've seen ballistics gel used in Mythbusters and other YouTube channels, and I kind of just always thought that it was really hard to acquire or make. And I was kind of correct. There's a ton of really cool and interesting information about ballistics gel creation and usage, but it's really actually not that difficult to make at home. Ballistics gel is a material or medium that is used for scientific research that is comparable to human tissue when it comes into contact with high velocity projectiles. And while ballistics gel doesn't model tensile strength of muscle, bone, and skin, it does give useful data as the gelatin mixture closely simulates the density and viscosity of human tissue as a whole. When it comes to ballistics research and real scientific testing, there are very specific formulas for ballistics gel to keep the tests uniform. The most common is called 10% ballistics gel. And it's a very specific formula. In fact, I'm gonna put that exact formula in the description below. This particular recipe and slight variations of it are what government agencies like the INS and NATO use. However, because this is an at-home build, we're gonna be using a recipe that is close to the standard one, but isn't the exact version of that. One of the biggest variables is that our gelatin has a lower bloom value. The bloom rating is a number that tells us how strong our gelatin actually is. It also correlates to how large the molecules making up the gelatin are. The larger the molecule, the larger the molecular mass, the higher the bloom value. The gelatin we're using for this build is called Knox Gelatin, and it has a 225 bloom rating, which is 25 bloom ratings lower than what the standard recipe asks for. So here's how we're gonna make our ballistics gel. We're gonna mix one pound of Knox Gelatin with four liters of cold water. Consistency is so strange, it's like potato soup with dumplings. Hi. It's hard work, but at least it's honest. So the next step is we're gonna pour this into our container. Yummy! We're then gonna put this mixture into the fridge for two hours. All right, two hours later, we've got some my fine gelatin up in here. I'll live with the legs. Ooh. Very jelly like. So, the next step is I'm gonna kind of rip this into little chunkies. After that, we're gonna melt it down to a temperature never exceeding 130 degrees Fahrenheit. From here, we're gonna pour this fluid mixture into a container that is easily bent to get the gelatin back out later. This is what happens when you pour incorrectly. You get a really, really foamy head. In the world of beers, this would be uh, not awesome. Uh, it's just all foam. <laughs> the temperature is still 108. It's gonna let that cool down to about 70 and then toss them in the fridge. All right, so we have this Terminator hand that we have from another experiment, another shoot that we did with the Nerdist. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw this in here because I think it'd be really cool to have a block of ballistics gel with the Terminator hand in there that'll kind of give it some stability. How spooky would that be if one of these fingers just twitched right now? All right, it's been 12 hours. Let's see what we got. Um, we got a lot of food in here, that's good. We've got some rosemary. These are heavy. This is really good. This is a really good gel. It's very firm. I'm really stoked on this. So let's, uh, let's see what this gel can handle. Loading Z-Gun. So we got 75 PSI up in there. Her. Very nice piece of gelatin. That's really cool. That's really good. I'm really liking that. Air cannon burst ballistic shell. In three, two, one. <laughs> it looks like it literally did no damage. It literally did nothing. <laughs> wow. We blasted that thing at 75 psi, and it. <laughs> It literally, I think it left a mark right there. And I think that was about it. In the past, we've been out of the desert and we've launched a potato with a potato launcher at a piece of ballistic shell, same formula. And it, it kind of like hit it and then it did all sorts of weird things, but it didn't pierce it either. And I'm pretty sure that the potato launcher had a higher velocity than the air cannon. So in summation, air cannons and potato launchers, they just don't have enough velocity to 
pierce the ballistic shell or the projectile is just too blunt. So the next thing I want to test are these razor sharp steel throwing cards. One is actually made with razor blades. The other are uh, pieces of steel that I just sharpened on the side and then put this card on them. So they're really curious like how throwing these rotating with that razor sharp edge what that'll do up against the ballistic shell. We're starting with the thinnest one first, the jack. <laughs> hey! Yowzers! That would hurt. If that were your skin and your flesh, that would be not awesome. Wouldn't feel great. It's really thin. I mean, these are actual like razor blades you'd buy at a hardware store. It's just not heavy enough. Like, you can get it to stick in to the ballistic shell, but it doesn't do a super great job. So we're gonna move on to the uh, king here, which is slightly thicker. Oh, it's like right through the side here. Oh, brutal. Yeah, it is really brutal. Let me see if I can get it one more with like direct hit, but that's proof that that would inflict some real damage. Ooh. It. Oh my gosh, that went in. Wow. I mean, you can see on the side, it's so clear. You can see how far that went in. Wow. So um, we learned that throwing cards are quite dangerous. All right, let's move up to the ace. That was a really heavy card. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Dude. Wrecked. That's like half the card. If this replicates how tissue works, that would that would wreck you. So, uh, for our next piece, we have a, uh, a throwing axe. Ta -da! <laughs> oh! Oh, you did it! You buried it! <laughs> Unreal, dude. <laughs> Holy crap. Wow. What this means is, um, based off of the data from the ballistic shell, is that a throwing axe is extremely dangerous. Since these tests are already really strange for what we're actually throwing at our uh, ballistics gel block, uh, for our next test, we're going to throw this saw blade at it and see what happens. Oh! <laughs> I mean, that was, pretty, that was pretty good. Okay, so what we learned is, is that a saw blade doesn't really do a good job at penetrating a ballistic shell. So we put this Terminator hand in this ballistic shell block um, for really no other reason other than we just thought it'd be like really cool and it might kind of replicate like what it'd be like to throw projectiles or launch projectiles at a Terminator hand. And what we're going to do is we're going to throw something that you probably didn't think that we were going to use. We're going to use, your parents always told you never to run with them, scissors. It's like a scary movie, you know? Yeah. Scissor test. Three, two, one. <laughs> wow. What? That was Cancel. flawless timing. Okay. <laughs> it's just like a slap. No! Oh, no! So after losing the leg on the tripod and uh, me trying like roughly 4,600 times, I uh, gave it over to Caleb. <laughs> he got it on the third try. So apparently <laughs> scissors are uh, very uh, good at uh, piercing ballistic shell. You just have to be able to throw it correctly. And I just uh, wasn't doing that. Okay, there we go. We learned about ballistic shell, what it's actually used for in the scientific world, and how to make an at-home recipe. And then we used a plethora of projectiles up against our ballistic shell that we made at home. Um, if you guys like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up in the comment section below. Let me know what other things would you use up against ballistic shell. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you really soon.